my name is Ann. And my name is Georgianne, and we're with the Farmington Livonia Days for Girls organization, and I'm going to show you how to make a fabric and PUL transport bag. This allows the, the girls to carry a wet liner home from school. So you begin by cutting the fabric and the PUL 8 inches by 15 inches. It's most efficient if you cut the 15 inches salvage to salvage with 60 inch wide PUL and then 8 inches along the length. It makes for about 16 bags per yard. The fabric that we use is a thin cotton fabric, um, perhaps too thin to use for any other purpose that you may have had donated and it's great for this purpose because we have two layers and it is sturdy enough without um, being too thick for your machines. There's basically four stages. There's the initial stage of pinning. Then it's pinned and heat sealed to keep it waterproof. The ends are surged. Then it's pinned again and the sides are surged. And then the final step is zigzagging the tails. Anne's gonna do the first step, which is assembling the PUL and fabric. The fabric goes right side down and the PUL is shiny side up. And she's going to pin uh, she's going to use wonder clips for each end. You can use paper clips, but don't use pins as they might put a hole in the PUL and then it would no longer be leak proof. Anne has done about five of these, so I'm going to show you how to serge the sides and do it in a chain to save thread and to save time. I usually do the PUL side up so then I know that the PUL is being adhered to the fabric below. And then you do the other side same way. So they're all, all ten are strung together and now I'm going to take them apart. So Anne is going to um, assemble, fold up the pocket and she's folding it up so that there's a two and a half inch um, lip on it. This is basically going to be the old-fashioned fold and close bag. So you can put two clips on the side. Again, you can use paper clips if you wish, if you don't have the wonder clips. And um, then the next step will be I'm going to iron it to heat seal the sides and make it more leak proof. I've made a little cardboard um, template here to fit inside pocket take the clip off nice wool setting on my iron I'm pressing the edges and the corner using steam Careful not to get the iron up here on the PUL because it'll stick and melt. Um, and the next step will be surging the sides. The sides have been heat sealed so you really don't need pins at this stage or, or clips because it's held together on, by the PUL. You fold the top down so that you have a little fold and close top and you simply surge the sides again you can it's important that you chain it at this stage so that you have a tail but not a long tail
Again, you can do about 10 of these in a chain. After that, it gets a little ungainly. So I turn it over so that the back side is now, this allows you to keep the flap down while you serge the side. And I purposely put two different colors of thread on here so you can see that I've turned it over. I used two different colors of thread in the upper and lower looper so that you could see that I did one <clears throat> on the front side coming down, pushing the fold down, and then I turned it over so that I would still push the fold down as I searched the sides. At this point, you're going to cut them apart and you want to have about a half an inch to an inch of tail, and that's, and that's all. If it gets a little long, trim it. Like it is at the, at the leading edge, I'm going to trim it a little shorter. And Anne's going to glue the tails down so that I can zigzag them on a regular sewing machine and they won't flop up and it makes sewing them much faster. You do have to wait for the glue to dry in between. So it's good to have uh, a set kind of in motion already. But as you can see, I have these long strands that no longer need to be here. So I'm just trimming them, trimming them up. You gotta let it dry in between, otherwise it's gonna start making your needle get sticky too. So um, all the tails have been put down in the corners, which will make it easier to zigzag without having to fuss with holding it down. And so now I'm just gonna take the back side using a simple zigzag, um, just a simple zigzag uh, stitch and stitch. Again, here you're going to want to chain these together, so minimum amount of thread being consumed. I reverse at each step, <coughs> at front and back. chain of bags and you simply need to clip them apart and they are finished and they are sized such that they will fold at least two soaking wet pads opening the flap up with one hand opening the pocket and then you can just grab the soiled pad and drop it in. There's room for at least two, maybe three. Close it up and it'll keep everything in your backpack dry until you're home. When you're home, <coughs> you can put water in here. Again, the same way, pull in the back, put some water in there, squish it around a little bit to start cleaning it. 
dump out the water, do it again, and um, you can remove the soil pads and wash them thoroughly. This is just for pre-rinsing.